faking it in a real relationship. That chapter uh, is about uh, the fact that we got together so young. He was my first, he was my only. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very inexperienced aside from sex. You know, before him, the furthest that I'd ever gotten was second base. Yeah. You know, and before him went up my shirt and I thought that was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so we were both turtles in our relationship. We waited to have sex uh, to our one year anniversary and he made it very special and, you know, romantic. Um, but we were two kids that, you know, didn't really know what we were doing exactly, but mm -hmm. we had fun figuring each other out. Most young girls and even many, many, many women, I'm sure so many women can relate, but you don't know how to achieve an orgasm. Yeah. A lot of women have no idea what it feels like to have an orgasm through sexual intercourse. You know, they know how to do it themselves or they know how to do it through oral sex, but through sexual intercourse, a lot of women just don't know. Now, if you don't know, how do you expect your man to know? Mm -hmm. I especially didn't know. <laughs> so we would be intimate and he would be putting his best foot forward. Like he is in the business of satisfying just all around. All right. Just no, no. <laughs> I'm, right. not ta I'm talking about your um, your mentality overall, just like, all around, <laughs> just in life. Like he lives to make me happy, and he puts his best foot forward in that realm. So I would see him trying and really going to work, and I'm sure so many women can relate. Like you want to reward that man for that work, and the only reward that you have to offer is an orgasm. But yeah. even if I didn't feel it. I would still be performative. Mm -hmm. So yes, I was faking it. But once you start, how do you stop? Right. How do you climb back out of that rabbit hole? You can't really have a conversation about it now. So I actually did it to myself. But what's more important is the fact that it had nothing to do with him. Right. He was doing everything that a man could do to please a woman. The problem was that I didn't know my own body. Mm. And you couldn't you know, communicate what exactly you wanted. Exactly, exactly. I had to learn that first. And what the problem was, I was so busy performing and putting on a show that I didn't take the time to be pleased. I didn't take the time to enjoy it because that wasn't my priority. My mm -hmm. priority was him. And that comes from a place where, you know, ever since we're young, we're we're sold these false narratives that women are sex objects. Women are here for the pleasing of men. Women are toys. You see it on billboard ads. You see it on the cover of books. You see it in you know, car magazines. You see it everywhere. Sexy women draped across something, advertising something. So we're kind of um, subconsciously led to believe those things. And for me, this is how it played out in my life. And everything is all good there now, right? Oh yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> I figured out my problems. <laughs> hurt my heart though. I ain't gonna lie. I hurt my heart. I, I might have cried a couple of times, but we. we no, it, it was it was a, it, it helped our relationship even better. But on a more serious note, um, me doing that was very very detrimental, and it put into effect the fall of a series of dominoes that hurt our relationship in the absolute worst way. It was actually one of the reasons why he cheated. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like, um, so how did that conversation even come about? Like, Envy, were you were like, am I not performing enough? Or, or were you at some point like, you're not performing enough? Or like, how did that come about? Uh, one night we were in bed and uh, we were having sex. And um, she was just, I, I remember in the middle of it, she was like, uh, yes, but no. And I'm like, yeah, yes, but no what? Something like that. Yeah, yes, but, yes, but no what? And she was like, we got into like a, a argument. And then she was like, well, you know, I don't mean having an orgasm. She didn't say it in that. She speaks way more eloquent than I would ever. And I was like, what? And she was like, I don't. I'm like, no, yes, you do. I hear it. Like, yeah, ah, ah, ah. and then she was like, no, I'm faking it. I'm like, every time? And she was like, yeah. And then that just crushed me because I thought I was putting in work. Like, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking I'm, you know, big daddy long leg, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and she's sitting there like, no, no, not at all. So. Uh, it really hurt my heart. Like it, it hurt me because for, for that time, I thought I was pleasing my wife. I thought I was pleasing, you know, you hear all these stories of women talking about their girlfriend. Oh girl, he was so short. Oh girl, he ain't doing nothing. And they, I feel like they laughing. Now I feel like that's what my wife was doing. Yeah. yeah but it, the way that it came out, we had gotten into an argument. And when I was trying to resolve the argument, he tried to slap the bandaid of sex over it. 
Mm. And we had done that so many times before. Like, let me just give us some. You know that that conversation. Let me, let me just give us some. Take this D and shut up. You know that. Uh, that. I, I actually think that's the most toxic. A lot of people love like makeup sex, and oh, in yeah. my opinion, I feel like it's the most toxic thing ever. And, and, that, and we had and we had had quite a bit of makeup sex. Yeah, and I was over it that day so i'm like we didn't even get to the bottom of it yeah you got to talk about it and then you can make up with this you have to get to the point of understanding right then you can have happy makeup sex but i was having disgruntled makeup sex and i'm laying there and i'm thinking to myself like and then it just came out so what i did which was wrong was i weaponized it there was Mm -hmm. a time and place for me to communicate how I had felt. There was a way in which to do it. And that is not the decision that I made. I did it to hurt him. I did it to spite him. And it made our relationship that much more toxic because now I have a husband with a bruised ego who's looking at me as a wife who's a liar and who not only lied, but lied to him for years in in the most delicate part of your How long had you guys been together? At when you had that conversation at that point um i think we were married for we're in this house, that was our house. Years. it was the other house. it was the other house yeah. when we were on a lease yep 16 17 maybe 17 years ago so we we're probably wow. 10 oh. or 11 years into our marriage mm-hmm. wow. yeah you remember where we the bedroom yeah, yeah, where I we remember sat the bedroom there and the had the conversation it was the house <laughs> prior to the one that we're living in now so yeah no, it was a long time ago but let me tell you something it had years of consequences Oh my goodness. That, that, that's a long time. That's definitely a long time, but you can clearly see the work that you guys have done with your responses and your self-awareness and the, the parts, you know, you each played to get to where you are today. There's not a lot of pointing fingers, which I love. So I love that for you guys. Love the black love come through. Um, Baby. Yes. And you guys also talk about um, questions to ask yourself before marriage. And you give, I think, about 25 questions to ask yourself. For each of you, what, what would you say is the most important question to ask, um, to ask yourself before marriage for the people watching? 